So this is a continuation of my first video. I highly recommend you watch that verse. I have a link of it below. But again, let's say we have this compound. We know this compound can go through resonance. And when it goes through resonance, essentially these pi electrons scooch over, forming this resonance structure. And then again, we know we form these resonance structures, forming this hybrid structure, this hybrid resonance structure. And again, why are we going through this resonance in the first place? Why does this compound go through this resonance in the first place? Well, it's because it gets to delocalize that charge. Instead of that positive charge being localized on this carbon, or instead of that positive charge being localized on this carbon, we form this hybrid resonance structure where that positive charge, that formal charge of positive one, is delocalized over this entire region with the smaller charge density, which we know is energetically favorable and stable. Nature hates localized charge with high charge density. Nature always wants to delocalize the charge. It wants to spread out the charge with the smaller charge density, which is energetically favorable and stable. So again, what's actually occurring when we go through this resonance? Well, we explained these electrons scooch over, forming this resonance structure. But what's actually going on? Well, again, resonance is just rearranging electrons in p orbitals. So again, let's just focus on the p orbitals. We know we go through resonance where these electrons scooch over. So what's going on? Essentially, these electrons in these two p orbitals scooch over, forming this structure. So now instead of the pi electrons in these two orbitals, now the pi electrons are in these two orbitals, forming this double bond. And again, that's what what resonance is it's simply just rearranging these pi electrons we're just we're just rearranging the pi electrons forming these resonance structures and therefore we can delocalize that that positive charge instead of that positive charge here with an empty p orbital or that positive charge here with the empty p orbital we can delocalize that positive charge and a similar resonance structure would be with this guy where again it can go through resonance these electrons scooch down pushing these electrons up here forming this resonance structure. Why do we do the resonance? Again, it's the same idea, but this time we're delocalizing negative charge. Instead of negative charge localized on one atom or localized on this atom, we form these resonance structures with this hybrid resonance structure delocalizing that negative charge over three atoms with a smaller charge density, which we know is energetically favorable and stable. And again, so what's actually going on? Again, we're just simply rearranging these pi electrons, the, these pi electrons in these p orbitals. Again, we said these electrons scooch down, pushing these electrons here. What's going on? Essentially, these electrons scooch down, forming a double bond, forming this double bond that's made. And when that happens, it pushes these pi electrons onto this carbon. So, so they push these pi electrons onto this carbon. So these pi electrons pu are pushed up, forming these two electrons. So now we're, we form the resonance structure. We form the resonance structure. And again, now we can, we can just go through these resonance structures delocalizing this negative charge. And again, so simply what resonance is, is rearranging the electrons in these p orbitals. You see how, how they've been rearranged. All these other orbitals with these sp2 orbitals with their electrons forming the, those covalent bonds, nothing's going on with those guys. Those guys, nothing's happening there. It's rearranging the electrons in the p orbitals. That's where the action occurs. That's where resonance happens. And again, in this example, we are delocalizing positive charge. In this example, we are delocalizing negative charge. But again, it's the same idea. And something important to realize is it's okay for a p orbital to have two electrons. That's okay. We see that. And if you were to find the formal charge of this carbon in this situation using the formal charge equation, you would see this carbon would have a formal charge of negative one. So that's okay. Two electrons in a p orbital, that's fine. And again, we saw here we had a carbon uh, with a p orbital with no electrons, with no electrons. And again, that's okay. We can have an empty p orbital. And again, counting the electrons, we would have a formal charge of positive one. But again, that's okay. It's okay for a p orbital to have no electrons. That's fine. And again, we can also have a p orbital with one electron. We see this carbon has, has a p orbital with one electron. And that's okay. That's okay. We see that here. And again, it's involved in this double bond. However, if a p orbital has one electron, it usually is involved in a double bond. You usually won't find a p orbital with one electron that's not involved in a double bond. That's not okay, and that, that usually never occurs. So if there is an orbital with one electron, one pi electron, usually it's in the form. It's, for, it's, it's participating in a double bond. And when it gets to uh, radical uh, resonance structures, it, it gets a little more complex, and then you can have p orbitals with one electron. And, but again, the basic idea of resonance is, again, we're just simply rearranging these pi electrons. We're just rearranging them, forming these resonance structures. However, now let's let's go over this example. So let's say we have this compound. We know this compound can go through resonance. These pi electrons scooch over, and when they do that, they form this resonance structure. And then originally, this carbon had a p orbital with no electrons. We can see this carbon had a p orbital with no electrons, and therefore, this carbon had a formal charge of positive one. 
But now we go through this resonance where these electrons scooch over. Now this carbon has a positive charge. So now this carbon has a p orbital with no electrons and therefore having that formal charge of positive one. But again, notice all we're doing is rearranging these pi electrons. Instead of the pi electrons here, instead of the pi electrons here, they scooch over. They, they scooch over, so now the pi electrons are here. So now these pi electrons are here. So instead of the pi electrons here forming a double bond here, now the pi electrons are here, forming a double bond here. We're simply just rearranging these pi electrons, and that's what's going on with resonance, where we're sharing the electrons. Now instead of this guy having no electrons and therefore having a positive charge, or instead of this guy having a, a positive charge, we go through these resonance structures, delocalizing that, that, that charge and, and spreading out that charge and rearranging those, those electrons and, and rearranging these pi electrons. And you might wonder, can we have resonance structures with the, this, these pi electrons? We know we have pi electrons here. So can these guys go through resonance with, with the, these electrons that are going through resonance? Well, actually, no, because you notice there's a disconnect. This carbon here has no pi electrons. It has no pi electrons uh, or p orbitals. It has no p orbitals. So because it has no p orbitals, there's nothing connecting these electrons together. So that's just something important to realize. All these compounds can go through resonance because they all have these p orbitals linking them together, adjacent p orbitals. So that's why they can rearrange those pi electrons. However, this guy also has pi, p orbitals. But again, there's, no, there's not a p orbital here, so there's not a p orbital to connect them. So that's why you can't do resonance. But again, resonance is just rearranging these pi electrons. So now let's say we have this compound. You might wonder, can we go through a resonance structures where these electrons scooch down, pushing these electrons up here, forming this resonance structure? Is that okay? Can we do that? Well, let's think about it. Uh, again, what is uh, resonance? It's just rearranging these pi electrons. So again, what if scooching this guy down here, pushing these electrons up here, essentially what that would translate to are these electrons scooching down. So instead of these electrons here, they would be here forming that double bond. And when they do that, when they scooch down, again, they push these electrons up onto this oxygen. So instead of the electrons here, now the electrons are here. And we saw that. They scooch down, and then now they push these electrons up onto the oxygen. So these electrons pushed onto the oxygen, forming this. So is this okay? Is, it, is this an okay resonance structure? Well, no, this is not okay. This is not a realistic uh, resonance structure. Why? Because when we go through this resonance structure forming this compound, Look at this oxygen. Look at this oxygen. This oxygen has six valence electrons. So therefore, it doesn't have an octet. And we explained in the previous video, if you don't have an octet, that's not a, a realistic resonance structure. So this is not a realistic resonance structure because this oxygen is lacking an octet. And we, we could look at it. We could look at it and it's lacking an octet. We have one sp2 hybridized orbital, another sp2 hybridized, and another sp2 hybridized. So we would have those three orbitals. And then again, this one has these two electrons in it. This one has these two electrons. And this one's involved in that bond. But then we also have a p orbital. We would have this empty p orbital with no electrons. And then if you were to count all those electrons, you would have six valence electrons. So that breaks the octet rule. So this is not a reasonable resonance structure. This is okay. It's okay. This would be okay. Because again, it, again, this has those sp2 hybridized orbitals with, with electrons in them. But again, if you were to count these valence electrons, you would have eight. So that's okay. This is okay. It's okay to have two electrons in a p orbital as long as you have an octet that's okay however this is not okay so therefore this is not a re the, these aren't resonance structures these aren't realistic resonance structures